Hi friends, how are you all? I hope you're having a great day today. Um, today's Tuesday and we are going to be continuing with area this week in math, but we're going to be doing some different kinds of shapes or figures. So today we are not going to worry about area at all. I'm just going to teach you about the shapes we're going to be working with for the next um, two weeks. <clears throat> and then we only have one math standard left for the whole year. We're almost done, guys. I cannot believe it. Okay, so you're going to need to open up your slides, and the name of the slideshow has a weird long word in it that I'm going to teach you about in just a minute, <clears throat> but it's called Area of Rectilinear Figures, okay? Don't worry about that word right now. <clears throat> Excuse me, we are going to learn about it in just a minute. You'll notice we have several um, learning targets on there for this week, and we're going to go slowly through them. Some of them might actually carry over into next week. Um, but we're going to be able to recognize that area is additive. That just means we can add the areas of different pieces of a figure together to get the whole area. Um, we are going to decompose rectilinear figures into non-overlapping rectangles. We're going to learn how to do that today. Um, then later in the week, we're going to find the area of the non-overlapping rectangles. And then we're going to add all of those areas back together to figure out the area of the whole figure. Okay, don't let that worry you or sound confusing. It's not that bad. All right, click into day one. Go ahead and do your estimation 180. Don't forget to write your estimates down that are way too low, way too high, and ones you think could be correct. And then check to see if you are correct. So pause this video, go to estimation 180, and then come right back. Okay, so I need some water before we start this one. This week, click onto your next slide. It's the first mini lesson slide. We're continuing with continuing with area, but we will be finding the area of some different shapes. Remember the last two weeks we've done only rectangles. Now, we're technically still doing rectangles, but it's going to be a little different. So the shapes we're going to be learning about this week are called rectilinear figures. I know that is a weird long word, but don't stress out. <clears throat> All right, switch to the next slide. Um, and there's a picture of some figures on the bottom. They're yellow, purple, um, and blue. So first I wanna break this word down for you. So I try to kind of split it up to help you pronounce it. Rectilinear, okay? All this means a rectilinear figure is a polygon, which is one of our word study words this week. So you should know what that is. Um, that has all right angles, okay? So remember, a polygon is a closed 2D flat shape that has all straight edges, so no curves. Um, so any shape that has straight edges and angles is a polygon. Now, a rectilinear figure, the ones we're going to be working with this week, are polygons that have all right angles, okay? And we're going to look at lots of examples. We're going to build some. You're actually going to build some today for your work. So let's look at the picture that's on this slide. Okay, you see kind of a yellow shape that looks like a T. You see a red one under that that's kind of like an upside down U. Um, a purple and a pink one that look kind of like stairs. Then there's um, a bluish one and a green one that are kind of like upside down L's maybe. If you look carefully at all of those figures, Every angle you see is a right angle. And remember, a right angle is that perfect square angle right here. It's 90 degrees from when we were measuring angles back at school. 90 degree right angle. Every angle in these shapes are right angles. Okay. Click to the next slide. And I'm going to go through this with you kind of slowly um, because I know it's a lot of words and we don't always like a lot of words in math, but it'll help us to understand it. So the first thing we need to know about these figures is that we can decompose them. We can break them down into different parts. It might be two different parts. It might be three. It might be four or five. Um, we're going to do lots of different examples. But when you do this with a rectilinear figure, you have to decompose it into non-overlapping rectangles. Okay? So we're going to look at these figures that can be split up into different rectangles. Okay? Non-overlapping means that they do not go on top of each other like this, okay? The rectangles might be like this or like this. They're next to each other, but they are not 
on top of each other. They're side by side. So we're going to look at an example first of some overlapping rectangles. And those are not the ones we're going to be working with, but I wanted you to know what they are. So if you click to the next slide, you'll see a red and a blue rectangle that are on top of each other. That is not what we're working with, but I wanted you to just see it so you can recognize it, okay? They are on top of each other, not next to each other. Click to the next slide. Okay, you should see kind of, um, looks like stairs almost. It's blue, green, and yellow. Look at how that is divided up. The whole thing, so all the way around that big kind of L stair step shape is a rectilinear figure. Okay, so all those different parts together is a rectilinear figure. Now, it's divided up, decomposed really nicely into the yellow section, the green section, and the blue section. Those are all rectangles and they are not overlapping. They are not taking up the same space or the same area. They're just touching each other side by side, okay? That is what we're gonna be working with, shapes just like this. So I want you to look at it and see the whole shape but also see how it's decomposed. Okay, so on the next slide, there's a few more examples. Now you'll notice measurements for side lengths and widths on these figures. We're going to get to that later in the week. Don't worry about that or stress about that right now, but these are just some pictures that I found. So if you look at them, the white one that's on the left, if you can imagine drawing a line connecting that little empty spot in the middle you would decompose that rectilinear figure into two non-overlapping rectangles, okay? And if you look at the purple one, you can picture maybe some different ways you might could do that. And I'm going to show you more examples in just a second. Um, and then the one on the right has a lot of different pictures on there. I like that it's on graph paper. It makes it really nice to see how you can decompose it. If by any chance you guys had gotten that graph paper, we were getting right before we stopped going to school. If you have some of that at home, um, that'll be really good for you to use this week. If you don't, don't worry about it. You don't need it. But if you have it around the house, it would be helpful. Um, okay. So before we go to the next slide, I want to show you a couple of figures that I drew. Okay. So look at this one. This is a rectilinear figure. All of its sides are straight and all of its angles are right angles. Now I want you to think for a minute about where we could draw lines inside of it. How could we decompose this into some different um, non-overlapping rectangles? Okay, now I'm gonna show you a couple of ways. Get my marker. So one way you could do it is like that. Okay, so now we have a rectangle up here and a rectangle down here. Okay, you could also do it Like this. So you could have this as one rectangle and the, this big one in the middle and these two on the edges. You could have four separate rectangles. There's lots of different ways you can see it. Okay? Now let's look at another one. Think for a minute about what different ways you could decompose that. And keep in mind there probably are several different ways when we do this. So I could do it that way. So now I have this rectangle whoa, on the bottom and this one on the top. We could also have done it this way. Okay, so you could keep this, you could see this as one rectangle here. Whoops. Let's see if I can do this with my left-handed self. One rectangle here and one over here or three separate ones. Okay, so I started thinking about how you guys could practice this and if you don't have graph paper, which most of us probably don't have at home, it's kind of hard to draw these. So I started thinking, oh, they can use a ruler or, you know, uh, the edge of their notebook. But then I got another really good idea. So what I did is I used some of my books and I made rectilinear figures. And we're going to look at them on the slides in just a second. Um, because this is what you're going to do today. You are going to make five different rectilinear figure models okay you're going to do this with stuff around your house you could use books you could use um the boxes of board games on your game shelf you could use pieces of paper you could use anything that's a rectangle okay so click to the next slide and you're going to see some examples of ones that i made at my house just a little while ago 
So I got some books from my stack of books that I read <clears throat> and I noticed they're all rectangles and they made a really good way for me to model this for you. So on the first slide with my books, you see five books and they're kind of stair-stepped next to each other. The first picture when they're all together, if you were to outline around all of those books, that would be the edge of the rectilinear figure. The second picture shows you how we could decompose that rectilinear figure, that big figure full of right angles, up into different um, rectangles that do not overlap. So all I did was just slide them apart a little bit so you can see that they're separated and then put them back together so you can see the bigger figure. All right, click again and you'll see another one that I did. Um, same books, I just arranged them in a different shape. I made them all touching. All the angles are right angles. And then I showed you how it could be decomposed into little smaller rectangles that don't overlap each other. All right, and then there's one more example. It's kind of a backward C. Um, and you might see shapes like any of these on some of your work. Now, granted, we're not taking milestones or DAs, but you do need to know how to do this. You will have things similar to this next year in fifth grade and further on um, as you keep going in math. So this one, again, I just slid the books apart to show you how they can be decomposed because later in the week, we're gonna learn how to take the area or find the area of the different rectangles in these figures and put them together, add them together to find areas of shapes that aren't exactly rectangles that we've been doing the last few weeks. Okay, so um, the next slide is going to give you your instructions for today's work. So you're going to make five different figures. You can use the same things for all five like I did with my books. You can be really creative and use different stuff. Maybe there's even something outside in your yard you could use. You could maybe draw them with chalk on your driveway. Um, I just wanted to get you guys away from the computer for a little bit and doing something fun. So... <clears throat> Take a picture of your rectilinear figure and then decompose it and take another picture. So for five figures, you're going to take two pictures of each one, one when it's all together and one when it's decomposed, and you're going to send us your pictures. You can upload them to your Google Doc. You can text them to us. You can dojo them to us. Um, but we want to see how creative you can be and keeping in mind what we have learned. So go down to your summary slide. And I just want to recap that we learned today what a rectilinear figure is. It's a polygon that has all right angles and they can be decomposed into non-overlapping rectangles. So hopefully making these models will give you some hands-on practice um, and you can kind of play with a little bit and see what these things look like. So make your five models, take the two pictures of each one, send your pictures to your teacher, and let us know if you have any questions, all right? We love you and we miss you and we hope you have fun doing math today. Have a great day, guys. Bye.